and Susie's Kitchen. Today we are going to make something that is so simple yet so versatile. Um, it's, it's, it amazes me that more people don't make it themselves instead of buying it and that is chicken stock. Um, I find myself in the store always looking for a true low sodium chicken stock and even the low sodium ones have you know five six hundred milligrams of sodium in just one cup which is way more sodium than uh, anyone should consume in one cup of anything. So uh, this is also going to be low fat recipe and because you control the ingredients in your house you always know what it is. So let's go over the ingredients and we'll get started. I have uh, five pounds of bone in chicken here and this was just two whole chickens that I cut up and then I removed the skin and the excess fat from them. And you see for some reason the wings, it is impossible to get the skin off the wings. So that little bit of skin won't really matter because whatever fat is left at the end when we're done cooking this, we're gonna skim that anyway. I have two teaspoons of kosher salt. I have fresh ground black pepper. And I have um, two cups of diced white onion. And um, inside a heavy pan with a nice, uh, a nice, solid bottom. You don't want a thin pan. You want a good heavy uh, saucepan or pot. I have put two teaspoons of canola oil and that's just to uh, make sure that the chicken doesn't stick when I first put it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the salt and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to season the chicken. And uh, like I said, when you control the ingredients in your kitchen, you always know what you're eating. You don't have any mystery ingredients. You don't have anything that you can't pronounce. Um, and, and that's my way of making sure that I give my family the healthiest food I possibly can. So, okay, we've got that salted. We're just gonna add a little bit of uh, fresh ground black pepper. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the oil has come up to temperature. And we're gonna start putting this chicken in. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit because as I add the cold chicken, I'm going to bring the temperature down inside this pan. So I want to make sure it recovers quickly. So you hear that nice sear. And I'm putting it meat side down. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to get a nice sear on this chicken. I'm looking for a nice uh, deep brown color and the bottom of the pan is also going to take on some color and then once I uh, start to deglaze it I'll take all of that beautiful color and flavor up off the bottom and bring that into my stock and there's so much rich delicious flavor in there uh, you won't believe how simple and delicious this really is. So we're going to let this sit for a couple of minutes and then we're going to come back. Okay. See that sizzle? Mm. You could smell this right now. It smells absolutely delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this chicken and I'm gonna show you, look at, look at that beautiful color. That's exactly what you're looking for. Look at that. Give it all a turn. Look at that color. And if you see the bottom of, uh, the, bottom of the pan is, is also starting to get a nice, uh, a nice brown crust on it and that's what we're looking for because that crust is going to go ahead to continue to cook and pick up flavor from the chicken and when we go ahead and deglaze it it's going to add so much flavor to that broth you're not going to believe it so what we're going to do now is i'm just going to let these sit down for another seven or eight minutes let them go ahead now and brown on the other side make sure all of the surface of the chicken is making contact with the bottom of the pan. Sometimes it's like a little puzzle. You have to turn the pieces until you can get them to fit away that they all lay down, and that's okay. Don't be afraid to move them, but once you find a spot, leave them alone. Let that color develop, and uh, we'll come back in about 10 minutes, and I'll let you see how everything works. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, the chicken's really cooking nicely now. It's got great color on it, and I'm actually, I took the, container that I had it in when it was raw, I washed it and I dried it. Be very careful of cross-contamination. You don't ever want a cookie, cooked chicken to come into contact with something you had raw chicken in. So when you work with chicken in the kitchen, just be very careful. Um, so I'm just going to take this chicken out now. Look at the color on the bottom of this pan. This is exactly what we were looking for. I'm going to leave all those juices behind and we just want to go ahead 
and remove this because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take those two cups of white onions that we chopped up and I'm going to go ahead and put them in here and I'm going to let them sweat a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and let them start picking up some of the color and flavor from the bottom of the pan. Um, onions have a lot of water of, on their own so I don't need any more liquid in the bottom of this pan. I am going to go ahead though and start to deglaze just you know use the onions and the onion juice and start pulling that beautiful color off the bottom of the pan and the onions will start to wilt a little bit and become translucent and then that's how we know that it's time to uh, move on to the next step so we'll be back in just a few minutes okay so our onions are starting to cook down a little bit you see the pan starting to get a little dark just watch it though because you don't want it to burn because burnt bits on the bottom don't taste good so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the chicken, we're going to bring it back into the pot. Put it on top of all of these beautiful onions. Perfect. And now I have here just some cold filtered water and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover the chicken completely with the water. This is about nine cups of cold water. Okay, I'm going to turn this up and I'm actually going to bring it up to a light boil. I'm going to use my spoon now. Look at the deep color coming from the bottom of that pot. That's all of those beautiful little tidbits that we're browning that comes from the chicken itself. And the more we cook this, the more it's going to go ahead and deepen and get on, uh, bring on a beautiful brown color and also flavor. More important than the color is the flavor. So I'm gonna let this come to a boil, then we're gonna come back. Okay, so I actually switched um, spoons here because this spoon has a nice flat bottom and I'm just gonna go around the pan and just kind of bring all of that color that was uh, you know, sticking to the bottom and make sure that there's nothing left on the bottom of the pan and make sure that I get all that wonderful flavor into this broth. Okay, just about coming up to a low boil. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take the lid and I'm gonna put the lid on it. I'm not gonna totally cover it because I don't want it to boil over. So I'm gonna just leave a spot so that the air can escape and it doesn't overboil. And then um, I'm gonna watch it because when it comes to a full boil, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it and I'm gonna let it continue to simmer for about 35, 40 minutes and I'll show you where we're at. Okay, so this has been simmering with the lid half on, half off for about 20 minutes. Um, that allowed all of the excess water to evaporate, reduce this and give it really, really good flavor. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and remove the chicken leave behind all of those beautiful juices. And don't worry if you grab some of the onions, it's not a problem. We're gonna go ahead and strain those all out anyway. They've done their job. They've lent so much delicious flavor to this stock that we won't be needing them again. Okay, one more. All right, so. We actually, oh, nope, there's one more, it's hiding. Okay, um, make sure that you do not discard this chicken. This chicken's life is not over yet. It has so many uh, opportunities to make uh, at least one more meal, maybe two, depending on the size of your family. Uh, I like to take all of the white meat off the bone and make chicken salad with it. You could make uh, chicken croquets, you could do so much, and to be honest with you, just like this, it's absolutely delicious. It's very moist, and uh, so please don't don't waste that. All right, so over here on my counter, I've actually prepared a strainer and a bowl, and all I'm going to do is just go ahead and strain this broth into this bowl, and you see we're going to get out of it just about as much water as we've put in. There's all the onions. Again, make sure you get all of that raw. You don't want to leave any of it behind. It's so delicious. 
you could actually, if you wanted to, you could use your spoon and you could smash these onions down against the side of the strainer and that would cause them to go into little tiny tiny little ground pieces and you see how they're coming out of the bottom here and you get all of that delicious flavor from those onions right into your broth you virtually have no waste and that's what I like about this recipe it's so simple but once you're done like I said the chicken has another purpose you're using every bit of these onions make sure you scrape that down look at that can you see that that's all of the onion. That's great flavor. That's just going right back into your broth. Okay, discard that. Look at this. Now you can see along the top, because again, it was impossible to get 100% of all of the skin and fat off the chicken. So you can see there's, you know, a small amount of fat up top. Um, what my mom always did, it was so very effective, and I, I do it also when time allows, is I'm going to take this. I'm going to actually let it sit and come to room temperature. It's going to take maybe about an hour. You don't want to put this in your refrigerator now because it's way too hot, and it would bring the temperature in your refrigerator down way too quickly and probably spoil your milk and your, and your dairy. Um, so what I'll do is I'll let it come to room temperature on the counter, and then I'm going to bring it inside. I have a refrigerator out in the garage that I use for stuff like this. And I'm going to just put a clear piece of plastic over the top and I'm going to let it sit for um, overnight. And tomorrow when I pull it back out, all of the fat will have solidified and will make um, a yellow uh, coating up on top that with a spoon I can very easily remove. And now this chicken broth will then be virtually fat free. If for some reason you can't wait and you want to use this right away, you certainly can. Um, I have, you know, I love my kitchen gadgets. This is a kitchen gadget I would absolutely invest in. I use this around the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, when I'm gonna make my turkey and I wanna make my turkey gravy immediately, but I don't have time to let the turkey gravy sit and have all the fat removed from the top before I use it. Um, I use this. And basically the theory behind this is that the, the lid has a little strainer on top. And then you see how the neck of this extends down to the very bottom of the container. And the reason for that is because naturally, oils and fats rise to the top because they're lighter than the liquid. And so what'll happen is, as I pour this in here, you're gonna see, I'm dripping some on my counter, but it's not the end of the world, okay. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna let it settle for just a minute. And you see the stopper in here? The stopper prevented um, any of the liquid from coming up in the neck until I'm ready for it to. And so by allowing it to sit for just a second, all the oil is going to come up to the top and then all of the nice rich broth is staying down in the bottom and I don't have to worry about the oil and the, um, the broth mixing inside the neck here. So I'm going to get another bowl and I want to show you how, um, you know, how this works. So it's ready now. You can see up top, there's about an eighth of an inch. I don't know if you can see that. That's the fat up top. And once I pull the stopper out and remove the air, what's going to happen is all that rich broth from the bottom is going to come up into the neck. And as I pour, all of the broth from the bottom comes out and all of the fat stays on top. And that's what's wonderful. This is, like I said, kitchen gadgets are just gadgets unless they have a very unique purpose in life. And this gadget is worth its weight in gold because you can then immediately use your chicken broth. All the fat stays in the bottom. Look at how beautiful and clear this chicken broth is. There is virtually no fat in this chicken broth. So there you have it. We've made low fat, low sodium chicken broth in our home it didn't take a lot of time at all if you're going to be in the kitchen anyway. It's, it's nothing to have the chicken simmer. And uh, I'm going to have so many uses for this. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put some in ice cube trays. And I'm going to have it in my freezer for whenever I want or even in a small container. I'm going to keep some in my refrigerator. And I'm probably going to go ahead and use some over the weekend. I might make uh, some chicken soup. I might make some chicken franchise. It doesn't matter what you use it for. It's going to be a delicious addition to any meal. So go ahead and make some up. You're going to be surprised how many uses you find for it. Okay. Well, thanks for coming by today. 
Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and like us on Facebook. We have all kinds of interesting stuff like this on there all the time. We'd love to hear from you. And remember to come back because there's always something good cooking in Aunt Susie's kitchen.